Thank you very much, uh, Zeynep. Uh, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, I wish to thank you immensely for making the time to join us at this Leaders' Dialogue on Feeding Africa, a critical dialogue for the development of Africa. The African Development Bank is pleased to co-organize this event with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. The President of IFAD, my dear friend, Mr. Hongo, and I most appreciate your honoring our joint invitation. It's great to see you, Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Your Excellency, COVID-19 has wrecked havoc. Aside from the number of people that have died, the impact on Africa's food security has been severe. Today, 246 million Africans go to bed hungry each day. Unfortunately, for many in Africa, the risk of actually dying from hunger is many times higher than dying from COVID-19. To fully recover from this pandemic, Africa must now rapidly upscale efforts to boost food production. Without food, medicines don't work. Without nutrition, vaccines are simply not effective. Your Excellences, we must produce food on less land, and we must conserve forests, and we must ensure sustainability and climate resilience. Technologies to feed Africa exist. What has been lacking has been a comprehensive approach to take them to scale with accountability for impacts. To take technologies off the shelves and get them into the hands of farmers, there is need for a technology delivery and development platform that works at scale. Your Excellences, that is exactly what has been done by the Bank Supported Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, called TAAT, or just call it TAT, a technology and innovation delivery platform supported by the bank, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, IFAD, and several other partners. Launched just two years ago, the TAT platform has delivered heat-tolerant wheat varieties to 1.8 million farmers in seven countries, increasing wheat production by 1.4 million metric tons to the value of $291 million. Across Sudan and Ethiopia, hundreds of thousands of hectares are now planted to these heat-tolerant wheat varieties. When drought hit Southern Africa region in 2018-2019, TAT came to the rescue. It deployed drought-tolerant maize varieties, which were cultivated by 5.2 million households on 841,000 hectares. Just think about that. As a result, farmers survived the drought from Zimbabwe, Malawi, and Zambia, allowing maize production to expand by 631,000 metric tons with a value of $107 million. We are boosting rice production. New high-yielding rice varieties from TAT has been cultivated on 1.4 million hectares, impacting 2.2 million households and boosting rice production by an additional 285,000 metric tons. That's estimated to be worth $108 million. Your Excellences, in just two years, TAT has worked across 28 African countries on 76 proven agricultural technologies across 14 crops and reached 11 million farmers. Food production has expanded by over 12 million metric tons. TAT has saved countries' food imports worth $814 million. Your Excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the achievements to date have been impressive. We must now go to scale to feed 1.4 billion people in Africa, taking advantage of the market opportunities provided by the African continental free trade area. And that's why we are here today for this leaders' dialogue. Your Excellences, we need your strong political leadership to turn Africa into an agricultural powerhouse. We have the technologies. We have the technology delivery platform to do it. We now need better policy incentives. We need greater access to financing to support agricultural research and transformation. And we need to develop special agro-industrial processing zones 
to add value to food produce. Your Excellencies, as Africa goes to the United Nations Food Systems Summit, we are already showing results never before seen at this scale in Africa. The African Development Bank will put greater support behind efforts to feed Africa. The African Development Bank will invest 10.4 billion US dollars over the next five years to boost the development of agricultural value chains and food production in Africa. The bank will also invest $1.6 billion in the next five years to support 10 strategic crops to drive food security. We will do our part, but greater amounts of resources are needed to feed Africa. So your excellences, partners, friends of Africa, let us now forge today a stronger partnership, a partnership for greater scale, a partnership to take technologies and innovations to hundreds of millions of farmers, a partnership to develop markets for agriculture, a partnership that unleashes the creativity of the youth and women in agriculture, a partnership to use agriculture to create decent jobs and wealth for Africa. Together we can. Thank you all very much. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting that after you mentioned the, the issue of Gavi and all that, you know, the, the difference between getting vaccines and, and, and therapeutic medicines out is that uh, those it, are, are largely communicable diseases. Now, hunger is not communicable. And therefore, it's very, it's very difficult to do that way to, to, to box and get where you get this and you, and you roll it out. However, I want to say something about what Tony said about accountability before we start looking at the financing. There needs to be political accountability for hunger. I, I, I think just that we have 246 uh, million people that don't have access to food is unacceptable. So there has to be political accountability for hunger, but then, then there has to be financial systems accountability to ensure that we can deal with that. And so we have the technologies, and Tony was just talking to you about the, the, the in your country, the, the, the issue of the heat tolerant uh, weak lines that we got that. You know, uh, through this type program, we were able to deliver 65,000 metric tons of certified seed of those things, Tony, to them in Sudan. Now, just to break it down for somebody who doesn't understand what that means in agriculture, if you take an A380 aircraft, that's the largest aircraft you have, passenger aircraft. The people, the gas, I mean, the, 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 the fuel and the cargo is about 98.4 metric tons. So you're talking about 660. A380 aircraft lying on a landing strip. That's the kind of impact you have. And that has allowed them to actually increase food security by 50%. Now, how do you take these kind of things to scale? Now, that's where I want to come to the issue of the finance. I think it's time for us to set up a, a, a financing facility for food nutrition, um, in a food security and nutrition in Africa. What will that do? It, would, it will operate differently from the Gavis and all that. First is that in the case of Gavi and the Global Fund, they take technologies that are developed outside Africa and they bring it to Africa. They aggregate and they sell. But in this particular case, like Gilbert said, we need to finance the R&D system in Africa, the global, the regional, and the national, to actually get innovations out. Secondly, is that it will support the scaling up of these technologies to scales of hundreds of millions that we have just been talking about. Yeah. Then we have biofortified uh, food crops. We actually have food fortification that we can take to scale. And finally, we also need to support school feeding programs in a comprehensive way. So we actually feel it's time to really have um, a global alliance that we move together to have this fund or this facility uh, for food security and nutrition in Africa to take right. what we know exists goes to scale, but not based on bringing things from outside, use Africa's R&D, use African farmers to produce uh, things and then support the R&D system to get technologies to scale. The time for that is now, and I think Gilbert and I talked about it, and we think we need to do it right now. Yeah, you know, especially with the, uh, Zinab, the, the issue of climate change, I think the having digital advisory services is going to be a key component of farmers being able to adapt to that. Uh, from floods to drought and all that. So just having really information in your hands and the power of mobile phones actually provides that. Um, I think um, we can do that. We, we launched a program uh, together with the Global Center for Adaptation, um, which is called the uh, African Adaptation Acceleration Program. And that program is to mobilize $25 billion 
to allow Africa to adapt to climate change because you know it's very, very critical. But one of the key elements of that program is what we're trying to do with digital advisory services for farmers on climate change. So that would suppose to reach about, say, uh, 30 or uh, 40 million farmers with digital advisory services. Um, Hun Wei, uh, Gilbert mentioned an issue earlier on, which I think is very important as well. Yeah. It's the whole issue of crop insurance. We have today index crop insurance. We have past, you know, insurance for pastoralists and so on that we need to do and, and, and get that out to them. Yeah. But more importantly, I think for me in adapting to climate change is the importance of, you know, using water better. Water yeah. issues, water is going to be the most critical thing. So doing that is going to be key. And to do that, that's where the issue of drones comes in. And yeah. that's why we have to get a lot of young people into agriculture as a business. The young people, they are the ones that will use the drones. They use satellite imagery. They yeah. use remote sensing. They use automation. And so we've got to make agriculture really cool for young people. I've been saying that, Tony, you know, you I, and I, when I was- You've been saying that for ages. Yeah, sexy. but I'm excited about, I'm excited about the young people of Africa. They are the, the ones going to turn okay. Africa around. And I remember telling to uh, Aliko Dangote, you mentioned him at the, in the beginning. Yeah. I told Aliko, the future business, the future millionaires and, and billionaires of Africa will not come from oil and gas industry. They will yeah. come from on the ag business. And I'm glad that he understands that. And I think the young people of Africa understand this. Right. Agriculture as a business is the key. Let's, let's, let's help the young people to invest in agriculture. They will turn this place around completely. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, President Makisal, uh, my dear brother, Mr. President, I would like on behalf of myself and my brother Gilbert to really, really thank you. De vous remercier avec tous nos corps très sincèrement pour avoir trouvé le temps uh, pour participer, pour assister à ces réunions, mais aussi pour le brillant sommet que vous avez donné de tous nos travaux qui est vraiment très, très intensif. Je sais que votre agenda est très, très chargé, mais vous avez pris le temps de rester avec nous et de vraiment s'agir de, 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 de participer très activement. Et la discussion concernant l'agriculture uh, pour uh, nourrir l'Afrique, a commencé uh, à Jaminagio. Uh, C'était vous en 2015, quand j'étais uh, élu la première fois uh, en tant que président de la BAD. Donc, vous avez uh, uh, eu ces réunions, c'est là-bas que nous avons discuté avec le, les choses, les, les organisations internationales comme le, 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 le IFAD, le CGIAR, les centres de recherche uh, national, régional, FARA et tout cela pour euh, aboutir à la discussion sur le feed Africa, la stratégie de feed Africa. Et j'espère qu'aujourd'hui, selon que vous avez écouté, vous êtes satisfait de le progrès que nous avons fait. Et le travail n'est pas euh, euh, fini. On va continuer à, à, à poursuivre euh, l'agenda. Il y a beaucoup de défis, et on, mais on ne, reste pas, euh, euh, on ne va pas rester sans avoir relevé tous les défis. I would like to close, therefore, by really, really thanking all the excellences, the heads of states and governments that have actually participated so much. It's impressive turnout uh, that we have had here today, and I want to really, really thank them. And I will just close with two statements uh, from the heads of state. Um, when the president of Mananagua of Zimbabwe said, he said, and I quote him, a farm, a farm foundation has been established for sustainable growth of our agriculture. And His Majesty, the King, let's say, of Lesotho said, and I quote, we must defeat hunger and malnutrition once and for all. I think with the kind of political leadership we've seen today, my brother, the president of IFA and I, we are confident that working with all your partners, we will collectively be able to defeat hunger and malnutrition once and for all. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Your Excellences. We are most grateful. Thank you, sir.